everyone! I'm Lily, and welcome to part four of my set review for War of the Spark. Uh, just gonna jump more or less right into it. Uh, but I'm going to be evaluating these for limited, primarily draft and sealed. Um, I have more extensive notes in the first video, uh, which I did, which is the gold cards, which you should be able to find if you look just a few videos before this one, um, or in the playlist, which will be linked at the end of the video, um, if you have trouble finding it. Uh, but yeah, but let us just jump into the black arts. So first up we have Aid the Fallen, which is one in a black for sorcery. Choose one or both. Return target creature card from your graveyard to your hand, or return target planeswalker from your graveyard to your hand. Okay, so, um, the most common version of this card we see is at, like, three mana, return two creatures from your graveyard to your hand, and you know, those are usually just perfectly playable, like, nothing exciting. This one required is cheaper, but does, can't get two creatures, it has to be a creature or a planeswalker. Um, you rarely will only have a planeswalker and no creatures, so really, because it's limited and you're going to be ranking a lot of creatures in your decks because it's limited, um, but planeswalkers are one of those things that you're going to want a few in your deck first. I mean, if you don't have it, have paying two mana to a creature card from your hand isn't great, but it's not the worst thing that you're doing in the world. Um, like, it's not a card I'm going to go out way on my way in the draft, but I'll play the first one or two in my deck and be pretty happy about it. Um, but I do want at least, at least probably a couple Planeswalkers in my deck, um, uh, before I'm like, yes, I want to be putting more, um, unless, like, your one or so is just one thing that you really would love to recur. But the fact that you don't need Planeswalker there and sometimes you just got to get back your creature is perfectly fine. Bane Hail, which is one black for a 1-1 one, one with lifelink and haste. I'm not a big fan of playing 1-1s one, that, like, uh, for, for most one-drops, they have to be good. They have to be, like, either good at all stages of the game or extremely good early, and this is neither. Like, you play this turn one, Okay, it gets in for one, you get lifelink. The next turn they play something and you're already outmatched. So no unvain healing. Just no, don't play this. Bleeding Edge, which is one black black for sorcery. Up to one target creature gets minus two, minus two until end of turn. A mass two. I like this a lot. I mean, it's sorcery speed and but it's removal and you want removal limited. Um, you can do a pouse combat if you need to, like, do stuff. And the fact that it also gives you two power on the board is nice. Where it's like, I'm not happy to being paying, like, three mana for a dead weight, uh, without the amass, where, but I'm like, I would still run that. And like I said in past videos, really the only part where you have to, like, start looking at a mass being, like, is this card worth, like, is a mass the main draw of this card? And the answer is no. It is just upside, and that's where I want to be with most amass cards. So I quite like Bleeding Edge quite a lot. Next up we have Bolas's Citadel, which is three black black black. For a legendary artifact, you may look at the top card of your library at any time. You may play the top card of your library. If you cast a spell this way, pay a life equal to its converted mana cost, rather than pay its mana cost. You also may sap get, sacrifice 10 non-land permanents. Each one it loses 10 life. That last ability, getting 10 permanents on your board, is such a corner case that you can pretty much ignore it while having this card. I am not big on this card in Limited. Um, it'll be busted in EDH and stuff like that, but this is no future sight. Because think about it, like, realistically, how many cards, how much life can you pay with this card? And the answer's not much, like... <sighs> think about it, 
thing that th these cards are good for is like generating card advantage. Like there's a reason that like Experimental Frenzy and Future Sight are great cards because they give you great card advantage and you pay for them with something that replenishes every turn, your mana. Your life does not replenish in that way. And there isn't like a heavy enough life gain theme in the set to be like, oh, but it could be a life gain payoff. You're just, you're not gaining enough life in the set to really warrant using this. For the most part, you'll be using this to play lands, which is helpful and it shaves lands off the top and you're not drawing the lands as often. But you're paying six mana for that and very heavily costed in black. And I just, like, sure, you might replace itself by, like, casting, and might, like, cast a few low-cost things, but I just, I think it's just, the, the fact that you have to pay your life just makes me just not like it at all. Uh, so, I'm, I'm very down on Bolas' Citadel. It's just, it's too high a price for what it is offering. Um, both just mana cost, that, yeah, no, it's just, it's, I don't know. Yeah, that, 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 that sets it up. Okay, but also, I'm not crazy. That looks like the Jedi Temple, right? Like, that looks like the Jedi Temple on Coruscant. Like, maybe it's just me, but I see that, I'm just like, oh, okay. <laughs> Um, Bond of Revival, which is four and a black for a sorcery. Return dark creature card from your graveyard to the battlefield. It gains haste until you're in your next turn. I mean, it's not, it doesn't, it's not, it's a sorcery speed. It only hits your graveyard, doesn't hit your opponents, but typically these reanimation effects are quite good. And the fact that it also gets haste, so it can kind of just come out of the gates running, makes me quite like Bond Revival, like, as a good thing. Like, it is a 5-drop, and you obviously need, like, good, big, you want to have, like, bigger creatures in your deck anyway. Like, if your deck is a bunch of small things, maybe you're not big on Bond Revival because you're just bringing back your 3-2 isn't really what you're in for, even if it has haste, but if you're able to bring back big stuff, like, this can be a nice, big, splashy play. So, I like it a lot. Charity Extractor it is a 4 mana 1 5 lifelink. If this was a 4 mana 2 5 lifelink, I'd be a lot more into this. It's just, it just is, it will come up the board, it blocks well ish, but I want my 4 drops to have more oomph. Like, there aren't enough life gain payoffs in the deck to like want that trigger of like, ooh, it blocks and gains me life. Uh, that said, it's not unplayable, but I'm not excited for this. Like, I'll slot it in if I need four drops, but I am very much looking for other four drops. So, yeah. Command the Dread Horde, which is four red or black black for sorcery. Choose any number of target creature or planeswalker cards in graveyards. Command the Dread Horde deals damage to you equal to their total converted mana cost of those cards and put them into the battlefield under your control. This is not as bad, like it's playable in unlike Citadel, which is un like I think it's just unplayable, but it has a lot of the same problems where you're paying six mana and you're now having to also pay life to get these things back, because it's like, normally these are just animating things, you want to be reanimating big things, but I don't want to pay six mana for reanimation for, and a six life to just bring back a six drop. It's just too expensive, and put this in commander where it belongs, not here, and not unlimited. It's just, and it's like, what's the alternative? Like, you want to pay, like, there's no point where this becomes valuable. Like, unless specifically, like, you're recurring, like, a very specific piece of, like, no, it's just, like, no, I'm just not high on it at all. Like, there's a situation where it's, like, yeah, you can, like, bring back all that, like, go to very low life, you bring back a bunch of, like, hasty guys and bring in, but it's just, 
it's unrealistic to get those situations and not a high on command the dread horde at all. Tavriel, Rogue Shadow Mage, which is two in a black for a three mana loyalty planeswalker. At the beginning of each opponent's upkeep, if that player has one or more fewer cards in hand, or one or more fewer, no, one or fewer cards in hand, he deals two damage to them. And minus one, target player discards a card. No. I'm just, no. Like, this is a very slow mind rot, and I, mind rot is not a good card. Like, and also the fact that, like, it's one at a time, so they see it coming in the second card, so they'll make sure they know the other one's there, and that static ability, it's like, if it's a problem for them, this is a very fragile walker. It only comes down with three loyalty, and yeah, no, it's just, it's too, doesn't do enough, and like, its ability is very easy to like, just work around if it is a problem for them while they deal with him, and yeah, I'm just not big on him. Like, obviously it's in that situation where if you do have more of that proliferate deck, which black isn't really in the best place to be doing in that deck, but if you are, if your secondary color has lots of, um, proliferate sources and you're, like, causing them to discard a card every turn, Zavriel, I like a lot, quite a bit more, but the fact that black isn't really doing that proliferate stuff makes me just not really like Davriel. Davriel Shadows Shadow, Shadow Fuge, which is a four mana sorcery. Target player discards two card and loses two life. I just said I don't like mine rot in limited, and making it cost more to only have them lose two life doesn't make me like it more. Like Maybe sideboard, and if there's a card you can't beat, like God Eternal or something like that. But otherwise, no, I am not into this. Deliver onto Evil, which is two black for sorcery. Choose four target cards in your graveyard. If you control Blowless Planeswalker, return those cards to your hand. Otherwise, an opponent chooses two of them. Leave the chosen cards in your graveyard and put the rest into your hand. Exile, deliver into Evil. Okay, the likeliness, Bolas is a mythic, so you can't, pretty much almost 100% of the time you're not going to have it. And even if your Bolas is in your pool, in your deck, he has to be on the battlefield for this to be any good. Because obviously, if you have a Bolas, this card is insane and great and amazing. Just three mana return four cards. Like, amazing, wonderful. But if you don't, it's awful. Like, you get the third and, f like, three mana, it feels like, th I, I don't mind the three mana return two creatures from your graveyard to your hand, and for the most part this will be return the s third and fourth worst creatures from your graveyard to your hand, which is not what you want to do. So, despite the awesome art, I do not think Deliver Unto Evil is playable. I am really down on the black cards in the set, Come on, give us some, like, decent black cards. Dread Horde Invasion. One in a black for an enchantment. At the beginning of your upkeep, you will lose one life in a mass one. Whenever a zombie token you control with power six or greater attacks, it gains a lifelink until end of turn. So, it's, um... I actually don't mind this at all. I think this is quite good, and... Obviously, it's better if you are in that one or more, like, dedicated to mass decks. Um, and this is one of those payoffs that, like, make me, like, want to be in that deck. On top of, like, all the other, um, the flank one, the hexproof one, and the trample guy, which are all in commons that give your, buff your armies a bit. Uh, the fact that this one can also give your guys lifelink, which is nice to counteract its own thing, but only when it's quite big. Um... There are the situations where the loss of life does make it awkward, but honestly, the amount of life that this will save you just be by being able to like jump block every turn if you need to be in that mode, I think honestly counteracts that loss of life. Uh, so yeah, no, I quite like Dread Horde Invasion. Uh, yeah, and it's like I would like it more if like it made a new guy every turn, like if it was like 
even if it was just like a ground non flying bitter blossom. But, uh, yeah, no, I quite like it unlimited just because it's turn two, that is just a threat your opponent has to deal with. Uh, granted, it is awkward if you like draw it late game and you're at low life total and you just can't afford to play it on like a stop board state. Uh, but yeah, no, it's, I quite like it a lot. Dread Malkin, which is one black for a 1 1 of Menace. You has, it has, so it has two in a black, sacrifice another creature or planeswalker, put two plus one plus one counters on Dread Malkin. Uh, thank goodness they finally started printing these without the, you can only do this at sorcery speed, because all the ones that are sorcery speed that they usually have in the past, like, those have been unplayable, because most of the benefits of cards like this is the threat of activation. And while I don't think this card is good, I th don't think it's unplayable. I think it's just a decent inclusion. Because in all likelihood, unless like you're jumping of something and you want to sacrifice just to get some value or things like that, you're not going to be acting that ability too much or like more than once. But like once you're getting in for like a three three minutes every turn and just having that ability to grow him if you need to, uh, makes me like I like it decently enough. Um, I obviously like it more if you have more of that like if you have like some amass cards where you're less using it to build the big army and more just like amass one, sacrifice it, grow your dread malkin and things like that. Um, and obviously if your secondary color has proliferate and things like that. It's better, but um, I don't think it's good by any ma means, but I don't think it's unplayable. Like, it's just a solid creature for a low drop. Next we have Dusk Mantle Operative, which is one the black for 2-2 that cannot be blocked by creature's power for a greater. I mean, again, this is just, it's, it's a curve filler, like it'll be a 2-drop, and it's a 2-drop, like, is it good late game? Not particularly, but that is relevant evasion for late game. And evasion's important, especially in the set where you do have to like, kind of like how I talked in the last video, where unlike a lot of sets where, or almost every other set, it's just chipping in for damage is less important if it's actually like having a board state that can finish the game. Um, Cause it's like, it doesn't, your opponent's life total doesn't matter until they're dead. But the fact that there are these little like, milestones of damage that you've dealt in the form of their planeswalkers that you're taking out, that having these little evasive threat threats are very nice. And obviously there's decks where it won't be good against, things like that, but uh, yeah, I don't mind it at all. The Elder Spell, which is black black for sorcery, destroy any number of target planeswalkers, but a plane, choose a planeswalker you control. Put two loyalty counters on it for each planeswalker destroyed this way. I mean, obviously, it is. One thing to note is that you do not have to have you, the, your planeswalker, you don't have to target, so you don't have to worry about having your planeswalker yourself, because it just says choose a planeswalker you control, not target planeswalker you control, which is an important rules distinction. That's at the Elder Spool. I could see myself being wrong about this, but I do believe that this is sideboard. Just because it is just very specific. You have to make sure that your opponent has enough planeswalkers. Or like think of it as like a naturalized effect, but for planeswalkers. And obviously if your opponent isn't like that, like super friends deck, this is insane. But uh yeah, no, it's it's I would say it's a, it's a sideboard and when it is a sideboard and against a deck that has multiple walkers in it, it will be great. It'll be fantastic. But until then, it's just like, yeah. Uh, I, I just, other to, otherwise, it'll just be stuck in your hand. And yeah, so. It's also a little awkward because it's like, it'll be situations where it's like, I could cast the Elder Spell or I could just kill them myself, like my own creatures, where like, it's kind of this awkward situation where there are already other ways to kill planeswalkers, like built into their mechanics. So there'll be situations where it's like, oh, I guess I could just do that anyway. But uh, yeah, like it's a sideboard card, but it is very good as a sideboard card. And 
I could see myself being proven wrong and it just being a piece, a solid main board inclusion. I also like it more as a main board inclusion if you also have a lot of planeswalkers yourself and you're more likely to trigger that, like the using the other half of it where you're gaining extra loyalty on your own walkers. Eternal Taskmaster, which is one black for two three that enters battlefield tapped. I don't mind the inner battlefield tapped. I'm already liking this. Two mana two threes, I quite are just solid. And whenever it attacks, you may pay two in a black. If you do, return to a creature card from your graveyard to your hand. This is one of the best uncommons in black. Uh, yeah, no, it's just, it's recursion. It's repeatable recursions if they don't kill it. You want to kill these things on sight if you see one across the board from you, because it's just an engine that will start bringing things back. And yeah, very nice. Eternal Mass Taskmaster, like you quite a bit. Finale of Eternity which is X, black, black. Destroy up to three target creatures if uh, toughness X or less. If X is 10 or more, return all creature cards from your graveyard to your battlefield. Okay, like all the finale cards, ignore the 10 or less, because in limited, that is not likely to happen. Sometimes, yes, it will happen because you like top deck this after it's been board stall and you have like 13 lands on the battlefield. But the likeliness is that you're not going to have the 12 mana to cast this for X equals 10. And obviously, in that situation, it's good. But we don't care, because this card is bonkers. Uh, like... It's a 3 for 1. It's... There's very little to say. Like, yes, it is awkward when, like, you need to, like, kill, like, something that's, like, a 6-6, six, six, like a Colossal Dreadmaw, which is definitely in the set. Um, so it's like, oh, it's across eight mana and stuff, but you're, you're still three for one on, like, smaller things, and it's just, it's very good. There's not much to say otherwise than that, that this is one of the best cards in the set. So, yeah. I would honest, because it's like, if it was just one card, that would just one target for this, like XX to a target creature with toughness X or less, it's not great, but that would just be solidly play- that would be, like, playable. And the fact that it's three just makes it insane. God Eternal Bantu, which is three black black for a legendary creature zombie god, which is a five six of menace. And when it dies, or it's put in exile from the battlefield, you may put it from your own library, three from the top. And when it's battlefield, you may sacrifice any number of other permanents and then draw that many cards. Okay, sure, you might sacrifice a few things and draw some cards, but, I mean, his ability is not super impressive. Like, it's nice that you can, like, sacrifice things that are not using on the battlefield, and maybe if you have, like, if it's later a game, you can sacrifice some of the lands you've played to draw some cards and cycle them in that way. But you're mostly playing this because he's a 5 mana 5 6 menace that cannot be permanently killed. And just like all the God Eternals, I'm not going to spend much time on them because he is very good. He's not as good as the other ones, but just because his ability isn't quite as much there, but um, yeah. Herald of the Dread Horde, which is three in black for three two. When it dies, mass two. Okay, like I said before, it's like, is the amass, does the amass make it a a nice upside of this card, or is it kind of needed to evaluate it? And the command fact is, yes, I do not want to be paying a 3 mana 3-2. And the fact that, like, yes, it leaves behind, like, something, but it's not even quite a creature, it's not unplayable, but I don't like it. Like, if you do have the amass payoffs, obviously it goes up quite a bit, but if you're not really in that amass deck, I'm not as into Herald of the Dreadhorde, just because it's just too understat costs, understated for its cost, and it leaves back, like, yeah. So, I'm very lukewarm on Herald of the Dreadhorde. Kaya's Ghost Form, which is one black for an enchantment aura, 
enchant creature or planeswalker you control. When the enchanted permanent dies to support an exile, return that card to the battlefield under your control. I'm... I know, I'm always bad at valuing these. I always I think I undervalue these sort of enchantments. But, and like, I think the fact that it can also go in a walker makes me like it, because you can like use your uncommon walkers and like take them down to dead and then return them and start taking them down again. And that flexibility is nice and you'll put it on a creature and that makes it awkward for them. The fact that it also has exile uh, stuff is good and like makes it good and look quite solid. Um, plus it has Kaya on it, and Kaya is awesome, so that's just plus in its favor. Um, but that's it, like, it's still just fine. It's nothing amazing, you don't want to go out of your way for this, but I don't want to probably pay, want to pay more than one, but I don't mind playing the first one in my deck. Lazotep Behemoth, which is a 5 mana, 5-4. Five, it doesn't really pass the villain test, it doesn't do much, the 5 mana slot isn't something that you're really looking to fill. So I'm eh, it's not unplayable, but it's just very eh, I'm not really looking for it. Lazatep Reaver, which is a uh, 1 to black for 1 2, that when enters battlefield, a mass 1. This one I like because you get all of its power and deafness off the block, it's two drop, which is solid, like the other one that like when it died, that was a four drop. You're not really struggling for four drops. But on a two drop, it is two three with a power on the board, even if it isn't it's spread out. So I quite like this. I quite like this a lot. It's just kind of like a common two drop slot. And the fact that if you are in that amass deck, it is still relevant in the late game for making your big guy beggar. Um yeah, so that's about where I am. Liliana, Dread Horde General, who is four black black for a six loyalty planeswalker. Whenever a creature you control dies, draw a card. Plus one, create a two-two's black zombie creature. Minus four, each opponent each player sacrifices two creatures, which will draw you cards. And minus nine, each opponent chooses the permanent they control of each permanent type and sacrifices the rest. Liliana is extremely good. It's one of the Mythic Planeswalkers. Uh, she's honestly, I think, the best just because it's the easiest to cast of all of them. Well, Gideon is arguably easier to cast, but she's much more powerful than Gideon. Uh, yeah, no, it's just she makes guys for herself, she removes creatures, and she has card advantage. The three things you want to do with a Planeswalker, and she does it all. Yeah. Liliana is very good. Again, I'm not going to spend much time on it. Oh look, it's a Mythic Planeswalker. That's like one of the face cards for the set. Ooh, she's good. Liliana's Triumph, which is one in the black for an instant. Each opponent sacrifices a creature. If you control Liliana, which you can ignore. You can ignore that. They also discard a card, but just ignore the fact because it's a Mythic and you're not going to have it. So it's two mana instant uh, edict. It's solid. I mean, I like my edicts, especially at instant speed, so yeah. Like, if your opponent like does have kind of like a go wide thing going on, you might want to sideboard it out. And it's not premium removal by any means, but I think it's just a solid, solid card. Massacre Girl, who is three black black for four four with menace. When it enters battlefield, each other creature can and gets a minus one minus one until end of turn. Whenever a creature dies this turn, each creature other than Massacre Girl gets minus one minus one until each end of turn. So she shrinks everything and throws one ones, then it kills the two twos, and if anything else dies, like and now they're all it kills out the three threes. And in a crowded board, as long as you get like that one step, it's likely that she will just be a board wipe. Um and the fact that she is a 5-mana board wipe that also leaves you with a 4-4 four, four menace, makes me very much like Massacre Girl. Like, for all the reasons that board wipes are good, like, there are the times where it just won't hit everything, but, um, it will only... The thing is, it's like, either it won't kill 
anything because uh, it's kind of one of those things where it's like if you hit the one toughness creature and get that dead all the others will like the dominoes start falling and most likely unless there's like a huge gap between like the power levels of the lowest and smallest um but most of the time you're wanting to wipe up the board is on a crowded board um but in the situation where nothing really dies it's a five minute for four minutes which while about right and is kind of boring i'm not disappointed in uh but yeah no, i very much like massacre girl yeah obnixilis the hate twisted which is three black black for a five loyalty planeswalker destroyed our creature its controller draws two cards and whenever an opponent draws a card obnixilis the hate twisted deals one damage to this play that player Okay, this is one of the one few ones where I think the, the static ability is the really good juicy part of this. Where, yeah, like the destroying, having your opponent draw two cards is rough, but that's just a removal spell that you're only really firing on their most potent creatures. That like, the most likely their top two cards are going to be worse than that creature. And the fact that it also deals two damage to them right then and there and can be used as a finisher and that this is a threat that they have to deal with. Like, if you they have a gummed up board state, they have to deal with this because automatically that's just one damage every turn that's like slowly taking them down. And the fact that, yes, it is an ex you're not really running this as a removal spell, but you have the option for that removal spell if you need it. So, obviously... He's five mana. You don't if like you you don't want to push your curve too high, but I do quite like Obnixilis the Hate Twisted. So yeah, Obnixilis is cruelty, which is two and a black for an instant. Target creature gets minus five until minus five until end turn. If that creature would die this turn, exile it instead. Obnixilis cruelty is extremely good. It's just the best. Uh, common removal spell for black, so yes, very good. You'll always be hoping that, like, okay, pack three, I'd love to pick up an Obnixilis Cruelty. You'll be saying that a lot. So yeah, very high on Obnixilis Cruelty. Price of Betrayal, which is one black for sorcery. Remove up to five counters from target artifact, creature, planeswalker, or opponent. Kind of like the Elder Spell, uh, this is gonna be sideboard. Like, if your opponent has Planeswalker, like, he's, like, heavy on Planeswalkers, or, like, one that you really want to get rid of, you'll bring it in. Uh, or also, also, um, solidly if they're in the Amass deck, because this can just, like, nuke their army. Uh, so, yeah, no, I like it as a sideboard. It is kind of risky running on the main, main board, but, uh, yeah, I quite like it. Shriek Diver, which is, uh, two and a black. For a 2-1 flyer that you may pay 1 to give it haste until the end of turn. We've seen similar cards to this, like, before. And they've always been just fine. Like, this is a fine 3-drop. Like, it has to benefit, like, flyers are almost always relevant. And especially, like, late game, be able to give it haste. And just, like, them, like, your opponent not calculating to, like, keep their walker safe from, like, a hasty flyer. Because there's not many hasty flyers out there. But this is one of them which makes it nice to like kind of like take out blockers and stuff makes me like i'm not uh in love with this card but i'll not be unhappy running a running a, one or two of them soren's thirst which is black black for an instant it deals two damage to a creature and you gain two life i like obnix's cruelty better uh but again you're rare seldom unhappy to be running this card it's just, I mean, the two life buffer is kind of nice, and sometimes you just gotta shock something, even if it's a little bit of expensive, and that's just something you gotta do. So, yeah. Spark Harvest, which is one black for sorcery, as additional cost to pass a spell, sacrifice a creature, or pay three in a black. Destroy target creature or planeswalker. Honestly, I think the best way to look at this card is this is the five mana black common removal spell and you are usually fine with this 
Um, just with the flexibility that if you're not at five mana and you need to kill something, you can sacrifice a creature. And that flexibility is honestly A+. Plus. And the fact that you can also sack a Planeswalker, like, all those things combined make me just like, like Spark Harvest more than your average five, ma five uh, mana black removal spell. So I very much like Spark Harvest. So yeah, not much to say. It's like, it's like even at five mana, it's like you run those cards in your deck because you need those cards in your deck because it's limited and you need removal. Spark Reaper, which is two and a black for two, three. You can pay three mana and sacrifice a creature or planeswalker, gain one life and draw a card. Yeah, so I means it's two three mana two three, which is not the best. But the fact that like it is useful late game to be able to, like sacrifice small things and like draw things or sacrifice like spent uncommon planeswalkers makes it just me it's fine. Nothing insane, but fine. And if you need a chump block, you can like sacrifice and response and things like that, so yeah. I like it. I mean, my one downside is that three mana is a lot of mana still, so that's my only like complaint about it. That you have to hold up a lot if you want to use it in response to something. Tithe Bearer Giant, which is a six mana four five. That Winter's Battlefield, you draw a card and lose one life. Okay, it doesn't pass the vanilla test, but like I said in past videos, uh. Failing the vanilla test isn't really that big of an issue once you're past a 4-4. Four, four. Like, size, like, 4-5s will almost always be a relevant body on the board state. The fact that it replaces itself is great. The only caveat it is 6 mana, and you can't be running that many 6 mana, like, spells. Uh, but I don't mind this. I won't mind running the first one, maybe the first, second one, if I don't have any other 6 drops. And, yeah, no, not much else to say. Toll of the Invasion, which is two and a black for a sorcery. Target opponent reveals their hand. You may choose a non-land card from it. That player discards that card. Amass one. I'm typically not a fan of these effects, and giving an amass one doesn't push that over the board. Like, sideboard it in if you have, like, your opponent has a card that you can't deal with, like the God Eternals and things like that, and you need to remove it. But otherwise, I am not, don't, typically you're not running this main board. Like, yeah. Like, the only reason I'd see it maybe running me more, like, if you are in, like, that dedicated uh, mass deck and you just want to get a few more pieces that give you that and you're actually making, like, if you have several of, like, the uncommon things that really makes your armies very good, uh, then when that mass is a little bit, has a bit more oomph to it, I like it a bit more, but otherwise it's just not quite there. Unlikely Aid, which is one the black for instant, Target creature gets plus two plus oh and gain indestructible in all of turn. I mean, it's a combat trick, so you don't really want too many of these, but uh, that one essentially will win any combat, and that's really one where I want to be on my two mana uh, combat tricks. So I quite like it. I'll run the first two, and I mean, obviously, you don't want to be running that many. Um, also, it's just rad. <laughs> Vampire Opportunist, which is one and a black for 2-1, and you pay 7 mana to have tar each opponent lose 2 life and you gain 2 life. I'm very medium on this. Like, it does pass the test of, is this a 2-drop that is relevant in the late game? In the very late game, yes. Um, like, that is a 4-point life swing every turn that just gives you that late game mana sink. And I do feel like this format is going to be very grindy, so... I don't mind it as a two drop, like you need two drops and it's a piker, which is unfortunate, but yeah. This also isn't a format where like there's lots of like one one tokens running about. So it being a two one isn't as much of a liability, perhaps in other formats. Vizier of the Scorpion, which is two and a black for a one one, and when it enters battlefield, a mass one. Zombie tokens you control have death touch. I am very much not into this. Like, this is like, there's the cycle of like the, there's the black one, there's like the blue, black, and red ones that like have this like, the, the lords or the zombie tokens. And 
what are the two, what is like the two main disadvantages of the ima- like the, your army tokens is they're fragile, so they give me things like hexproof and stuff like that is good. And they lack evasion. Death Touch is neither of those things. Like, in the proper amass deck, you're, you're wanting to, like, have... Uh, sorry. In the proper amass deck, you're wanting to have, like, uh, big armies anyway, and Death Touch isn't going to matter. So, if you're already in that amass deck, and you have some of the other uncommon thing, uncommon things, it's fine. You'll add it onto it. Um, and if you have like a fair few other mass cards, like just giving it, like giving yourself instant plague rats, isn't the worst. Or like I think this is just very medium across the board. So yeah, not not too high on it. Varaska's finisher, which is two and a black for a three two, which when it enters battlefield. Destroy target creature on a planeswalker and opponent's controls that would still damage this turn. I'm very medium um, on this. Like, it's a 3 mana 3 2, which I'm not super happy on. If you need 3 drops, she's there. But uh, I find just that that ETP effect is so situational. There was a card similar to this during Ixalan, and it was just very hard to, like, actually, like, reliably use. So. Yeah, no, it's just, it's fine. Uh, like, sometimes, like, I think the, the Planeswalker is, like, nice for you if you, like, are able to, like, chip in at a walker and, like, just ping it for one. They're like, oh, it's fine, and come with the Fraxicus finisher. We're like, this is playable, but I'm not super happy playing it. So, yeah, that's about where I am on that one. And that is it for Black. So, uh, just two more videos to go. I hope you enjoyed this video. Uh, let me know if uh, you have any alternative thoughts on any of the cards, because, I don't know, I just... Black does not inspire me in the set. I think black is very weak. Uh, so, like, most, like, the good black cards are just, like, the rare bombs. Or the rare and mythic bombs, and, like, they have solid removal, but their creatures are terrible. So, yeah. I'm not, I'm not sure where I fall on black in this set. So, uh, yeah. Well, uh, I hope you have a wonderful night, and I hope you sleep well. And, as always, may your story smile upon you. <laughs>